I'm going to start with, with my rant, my daily take today over at HartmanReport.com. It's settled our white supremacy and the wealth of its oligarchs, the only thing the GOP fights for. And, and basically, my point in this, you know, we, you've got Herschel Walker and the hot mess around him uh, right now, which is, you know, he seems to be melting down right in front of us. But broadly speaking, this raises, you know, a question. What is it that the Republican Party stands for? You know, like if you thought that they stood for being opposed to abortion, and here's Herschel Walker paying for an abortion, which is, by the way, a crime now in three states. And no Republicans are calling for him to be prosecuted or even to leave the race. In fact, they're saying, yeah, yeah, hell yes, I'd support him. Ted Cruz just said that this morning. Then what do they stand for? And it turns out that there's actually a formula here. There's actually a plan. The, 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 the Republicans, and, and they're not shy about talking about it. Today's Republicans are trying to take us back to a model that once existed in the United States. Between the 1830s and the 1860s, in the South, democracy ceased to exist. There was no democracy in the South from the 1830s to the 1860s. Why? Because in the 1810s and the 1820s, the cotton gin came along, one cotton gin, very expensive machine, way out of the price range of any of the small farmers in the South. But this one machine with a single horse walking in a circle, powering it, or a water wheel, this one machine could do the work of 50 enslaved people. 50. And what this did was, you know, all the large plantations that could afford to buy a cotton gin, and, and the, it was widely distributed across the South. Several thousand plantations bought them in the, in the 1820s, 1830s. And because they were able to produce cotton so much more inexpensively than the smaller operations, they ran them out of business. And then they bought up their land. And so by the 1850s, you had two, two things going on in the South. One was it was completely economically dominated by fewer than a thousand families. All of the southern states. Uh, these very, very large, multi-thousand, in some cases, multi-ten thousand acre plantations. That these, these founding families, Brian Kemp's family, according to Greg Pallas yesterday telling us about this, Brian Kemp's family is one of those founding you know, that imported slave, enslaved people into Georgia over the objections of President Thomas Jefferson, who was trying to stop the spread of slavery during his presidency. And, you know, established this. And so that was one part of it, the economic part of it. The political part of it, though, I, I mean, obviously the Republicans are trying to reproduce that. And in fact, they've already largely done that. Reagan on 40 years of Reaganomics, now we've got three men who own more of the wealth than the bottom half of Americans. The top 10% of Americans own more wealth than the bottom 90, but the top 1% of Americans own more wealth than the bottom 90% of Americans. So you've got the economic piece of it, but the political piece is where they're really focusing their efforts. In the South, between the 1820s, there were the 1830s really, and the 1860s, in the South, of course, only white people could vote. So when Low-income white people, when poor white people, when sharecropper white people showed up to vote, they were met by slave patrollers. They were met by armed men at the polling places and basically told how to vote. And if they didn't vote that way, they'd be terrorized or they'd be, or they'd be murdered. There were lynchings of white people in the South in the 1840s, 50s, and 60s because they were trying to stop this oligarchic system because they were advocating for democracy. Democracy ceased to exist for 30 years in the American South. And what replaced it was this thing called the Confederacy. And the Republican Party is now still em is now embracing, which is ironic since the, you know, the Republicans, that was Lincoln's party who fought the Confederacy. But nonetheless, today's Republican Party is embracing Confederate symbols. They've waved the Confederate battle flag. They, they sing Dixie. They fight like hell to preserve statues of, of traitorous Confederate generals. So you ask the question, what is it the Republican Party stands for? 
who, you know, who really are our Republicans? What is it? What kind of America are they trying to create? And the answer is very simple. They're trying to reinvent the Confederacy. They're trying to reestablish an economic system where a small number of families own basically all the wealth or the vast majority of the wealth, well over 90% of the wealth, and we're there right now. And those families impose their political will. Now back in the South, they did it through terror. Now they're doing it through money, through advertising. And by packing the courts. And now, you know, as we're gonna get to that. The, the Supreme Court is looking at a case that might, you know, really establish those old Southern, those old Confederate systems of gerrymandering and election rigging and voter suppression. I mean, this is, this is how the South rolled for 100 years, how it continues to roll. And this is, this is, this is what they're all about. And how are they getting there? Well, they're running these insane ads right now. You, now, you'll recall back in 2020, Every single Republican in Congress voted to give everybody in America a $1,200 check. Everybody in, nobody out. That included all the people in jail. They're American citizens, or at least those who are American citizens. They have Social Security numbers. Send them a check. So now, with dark money from billionaires and corporate funders, Mitch McConnell's Senate Leadership Fund has dropped tens of thousands of dollars into these races, these Senate races all around the country, where they are running ads like, the, you know, Val Demings looking like, you know, screaming into a microphone with just this a absolutely frightening look on her face, a black woman with the, with the headline, Demings and Pelosi, one billion in stimulus to criminals and illegal immigrants. Keep in mind, all the Republicans voted for this. They're, they're doing the same thing with Mandela Barnes. They're doing, uh, well, actually, he wasn't in Congress. He wasn't voted, but they're, but they're saying he's soft on crime. They're doing the same thing with, uh, uh, I mean, it, it's just, pick your Republican, you know, uh, Reverend Warnock. They're doing the same thing with, with Reverend Warnock down in Georgia. Reject Warnock. He chose felons over Georgia families. I mean, he wasn't even in Congress when this vote happened, and they're accusing him of this. Herschel Walker is running ads uh, saying that Warnock, you know, was, was in favor of, of uh, uh, letting criminals out of jail. This is, uh, uh, this is about this over at rawstory.com. He's, he's uh, the fact checker at CNN says, this is just a lie. It's a flat out lie. This assertion, this is the fact checker. His name is uh, da Daniel Dale. He says, this assertion which uh, Walker is running, is, uh, here's the, the assertion, quote, Raphael Warnock called police thugs, then cut their funding. But Warnock never cut any police funding. He was never in a position to do so. The United States Senate doesn't control police funding to begin with. So the CNN fact checker said, this assertion is so imaginary that Walker's campaign hasn't even responded to requests to identify what he's talking about. But they're continuing to run the ads, lying about Democrats and using crime to scare people. This is what the GOP is doing. And by the way, this strategy is winning for them. I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. But why are they doing this? Because they're trying to reestablish the Confederacy. White supremacy, oligarchy, and democracy. This is the end game for the GOP. The majority of Republican candidates across the United States right now, 229 of them, deny Joe Biden won the election. These people are anti-democracy.